Shalom, dear friends. Havarim, we say in Hebrew. My name is Devora Kalik, and I'm with Bless Israel Network. And I apologize, we haven't recorded anything for a while because we have been on a ministry trip and just got back a couple of weeks ago. So I wanted to record something special for Hanukkah, which begins tonight, December 12th at sundown. You know, there's something that you may have not thought about, and it is widely believed that Yeshua, Jesus, was born not at Christmas time, but actually during the fall, and probably during the fall feast. So either during the Feast of Trumpets or during the festival of the Feast of Tabernacles, and or we call that Sukkot. Well, if you think about it, backtracking, if he was born at that time, then that would mean he was conceived nine months before which would put us right about the time of Hanukkah. So it's rather interesting that this would mean, if this is true, that the, the light of the world was conceived during what is called the Festival of Lights or Hanukkah. It's also known as the Feast of Dedication. I wanna talk very briefly and share with you about the history around the events which began, which, which led up to the first Hanukkah. Around 168 BCE, before the Common Era, Antiochus IV, also known as Antiochus, he called himself Antiochus Epiphanes, which means uh, Antiochus the Revealed Ones, one, and he was actually called by the Jews Antiochus Epimenes. Well, Antiochus IV of the Seleucid dynasty, or Syrian dynasty, dynasty, was then attempting to Hellenize his empire and remove all association with the Jewish people, or of the Jewish people, with um, what was once called the ancient you know, kingdom of Israel and Judea. Well, Antiochus passed a law that prohibited the reading of the Torah, keeping Shabbat, and circumcising the little male baby boys, all on the penalty of death if disobeyed. In a defiant rage, he actually ended up desecrating the temple in Jerusalem by putting a statue of Zeus on the altar. In essence, he was really attempting to change the purpose of the temple, which was the throne of God on earth and the dwelling place of his presence. He was also trying to change the purpose of Jerusalem and make it his capital, the capital for his empire. The reality is, if he had succeeded and the Maccabees had not revolted, Jerusalem would have become an international city and the distinctiveness of the Jewish people would have um, basically vanished. There would have never been a Jewish Messiah to be born among the Jewish people because there wouldn't have been a distinctive Jewish people nor a Torah observant Davidic family for which he could be born into. Because of Judah Maccabee and the revolt, the Seleucid dynasty was eventually destroyed and defeated and Jerusalem and the temple were once more in Jewish hands. It is no coincidence that in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, it mentions that Yeshua, or Jesus, was in Solomon's colonnade on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem during the Feast of Dedication. That, my friends, refers to Hanukkah. This is a clue in the Gospels that Yeshua kept Hanukkah and celebrated it according to the custom of the Jewish people at that time. 
I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about this week's Torah portion. It is most certainly not a coincidence that Parsha Miketz, which means at the end, and Hanukkah often coincide with one another. It's because Hanukkah is important for the end, for the Geula or the redemption of the Jewish people and all of those non-Jews who are grafted into the nation of Israel through the Jewish Messiah. Have you ever wondered why Yeshua himself makes mention of Hanukkah in directly speaking in Matthew 24? This is what he was referring to. He was referring to Hanukkah when he mentioned the book of Daniel with seeing the abomination of desolation or the desolating abomination and the comment that he made, let the reader understand, or rather the comment that was made by the gospel writers, let the reader understand. This is actually referring to the time of Antiochus IV, which took place um, several hundred, well, uh, about a hundred and 60 some years before Yeshua's time when he erected that statue of Zeus on the altar in the temple desecrating it in about around 168 BCE. This was the event that actually triggered the Maccabean revolt. Antiochus was attempting to destroy the temple and remove the Jewish association from the Temple Mount and Jerusalem. Sound familiar? It should, because this is exactly what is taking place today, my friends. The Arab Muslims and the Christians via the Pope of the Catholic Church and the nations of the world under the auspices of the United Nations are on a virulent campaign to steal away the Temple Mount and Jerusalem from those whom God made an eternal covenant with, the Jewish people. Our God, the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, has put his name on the Temple Mount, he's put his name on Jerusalem, and he's put his name on the Jewish people. The purposes for Jer Jerusalem are eternal. The Temple Mount is indeed the throne of God on the earth, and the Jewish people are his unique and special treasure, Am Segula, it refers to them as in the Torah, through whom, they are the people through whom the redemption comes to the rest of the world. Why does the world want to have the rights to Jerusalem, the holy city? Why do they want the Temple Mount? I'll tell you why. Because just like as in the time of the Maccabees, they are trying to change the destiny of Jerusalem. In addition, just like the Seleucid king was trying to destroy the Jewish people, which would have removed the possibility of a Jewish Messiah coming for the first time, they are again attempting to keep the Jewish Messiah from returning to Jerusalem, to set up his kingdom in Jerusalem and prevent him from building the Holy Temple, which will be the seat of his authority and his rulership on Mount Moriah. They are trying to do this by snatching these things, the Temple Mount and Jerusalem itself, out of the Jewish people's hands. The world cannot change the destiny of Jerusalem or the Temple Mount. They are destined to failure. They absolutely will not succeed. We who follow the Messiah Yeshua or Jesus are obligated to stand up and fight against this encroaching darkness. 
We must let our lights shine into this deep darkness that is taken over the people of the world by prayer and also by making our voices heard in order to educate people to the truth, to share the factual history with people. We should educate ourselves, put together teachings, have Bible studies, write articles, whatever we can do. In addition, we must share the dangerous ramifications of ending up on the wrong side of this spiritual war. We will win the battle with you or without you. The choice is yours. Ministries like ours, like Bless Israel Network, are dedicated to being a voice for our brothers and sisters here in the land of Israel, and also to providing solid biblical teachings on issues such as these, which have become so important in our day. Together, we all can make a difference. Our faithfulness and obedience to Yeshua's commandments and the Torah, which are in the Torah, the things that he commanded us, will be the glue that actually holds us together in these difficult times as we continue to fight and to build his kingdom on earth. And in addition to that, our love and our unity, our love for one another, will cause him to yearn to return to us. And it is these two things that will bring him back to the earth. As it says in John, Yohanan, chapter 1, verse 15, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not, cannot overcome it, nor will it ever. May you have a joyous and light-filled Hanukkah. And as you write as you light the, the Hanukkah, the candles, the lights from the right to the left, don't forget to say the eight names of the Messiah mentioned in Isaiah 9-6. Pele, Yoetz, El, Gibor, Avi, Ad, Sar, Shalom. Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty, God, Everlasting, Father. Prince, peace, the Prince of Peace, the Prince, the Sar Shalom, will come. And he wants to bring his light to the whole world. Let's remember that this Hanukkah as we light our, our Hanukkah. Hag Hanukkah Sameach from us at Bless Israel Network. Litwaot.